First John chapter five. Good notes to make in your 
Bible, because I want to show you this before we move on. I'm going to take my time on this, but it's important. You see, you don't have to take this out. It's supposed to be there. You can't get the Bible. I'm going to show you it's supposed to be there. Uh, we're going to go a few places, and you need to jot this down. I, y'all, one of the best services you can do yourself, make notes in the Bible. I've got, the, when I'm fixing to take off to, I've got it right there. I've got a line drawn from 1 John 5, 7, and I've got it right here, Trinity Proofs. Let's go a few places. Let's go to Romans 10 real quick. We've got to find out who this witness is if we're going to get any help. Romans 10 and verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Y'all remember that phrase. God hath raised him from the dead. All right, well, which one was it? Let's go to Acts 3.26. Acts 3.26. Acts 3.26. Acts 3.26. Acts 3.26. Don't you know that that spread like wildfire? You never believe what happened to 
down there at the Jordan today. There wasn't something done in the closet. That was a witness that he was God, God the Son. Now, the blood had to do with the crucifixion. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, the sun refused to shine. The earth shook. The, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. And even the war-hardened centurion said, Surely this was the Son of God. They knew. This wasn't done in a closet. Those were witnesses to who he was. But Christ has ascended. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. We didn't see the water. We didn't see the blood. But the witness that we had testified to him. Now, you know, when somebody witnesses something, whether it be a crime or, or whether somebody witnessed the tornado, you know, the news, the news people, they never run into somebody. They don't ever interview somebody who just heard about the storm. They want to talk to somebody who saw it firsthand. And it always seems to be the most redneck person they can find. <laughs> I'm not going to do my impression, but I'm saying things in my head. They want to talk to somebody who saw it, who gave an eyewitness account. It's the same way with the Holy Spirit. Do you know that we're saying we have a witness from another world living inside of us? And he has seen it. He's seen it. Everything in heaven. He saw the cross. He saw the baptism. We have that kind of witness living inside of us. That's why I know that there's a heaven. Because he's seen it. And he's confirmed inside of me. That's why I know there's a risen Savior because he saw it. And he's living inside of me. That's why I know that Jesus Christ is alive. And we have a witness from another world living inside of us. Now... It says in verse 10, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. And those are the things that he wrote that we may know that we have eternal life because he's living inside of us. But it might behoove us to know for sure he's living inside of us. If we're saying and we have that witness from another world, we have God the Son living inside of us, we'll know it. We will know it is. It's not one of those subtle things. I mean, we'll know it. How can the Holy Spirit, how can the Holy Spirit witness confirm that we have eternal life? Number one, by a convicted heart. A convicted heart. John 16, verse 8 says, When He has come, the Holy Spirit, He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And I found this interesting. I just discovered this when I was studying this. But the word reprove and the word, you know, we used to, we don't hardly ever use the word reprove, but we use the word convict a lot. The word reprove and the word convicted come from the same exact Greek word, translated from the same word. But the word convicted is only used one time in the entire Bible. I thought it was kind of strange as much as we use that word. It's only in the Bible one time, but it comes from the same root word as reprove. The only time it's found in the Bible is when the Pharisees brought the woman that was called an adulterer to Jesus, and they said, you know, your law says that she should be stoned, but what say you? And he said, if any of you be without sin, let him cast the first stone. The Bible says they were convicted by their conscience. The word convicted means to be exposed. It means to be made ashamed. It means to bring things to light and to our attention uh, that we're in darkness. And so it'll ashamed somebody. I don't see a lot of people getting ashamed over sin these days. I don't see a lot of people getting convicted over sin these days. Uh, the Holy Spirit will point out things. Let me say this. The Holy Spirit... The big preacher. He'll point out things in our life and in our heart that the preacher may not even say a word about. You ever had that happen before? Yeah. I'm telling you, some of the most life changing sermons, I, I can tell you, I mean, I've heard some good sermons in my life, but I can tell you about four sermons off the top of my head that really changed my life because it was exactly what I needed for that time. And a couple of those times, the preacher wasn't even preaching about what I was doing. The big preacher. Showed up, he did. He'll, he'll deal with us about things that uh, the preacher may not even be talking about. Them. As 
as I was thinking about this, I was reminded about the woman at the well, the Samaria. You know, when the Lord taught her, and he said, he said, go and call thy husband. And she said, well, you know, I, I don't have a husband. And he said, you're right. Thou hast well said it because thou hast had five husbands, and the man you're with now is not your husband. And, you know, she got convicted about that thing. But, you know, when she went back to the people of Samaria, you know what she said? She said, come see a man that told me all that I ever did. Did he tell her all that he ever did, that she ever did? He only brought up one thing. Isn't that something? And she said, he told me all that I ever did. Isn't that what you felt like when the Holy Ghost was calling you unto salvation? He was revealing your sin, convicting you of your sin. I don't know about you, that's what I felt like. I felt like he was telling me about everything that I'd ever done. He'll do that sometimes. I think about Somebody sent me a video on Facebook this week. They had a gay pride rally up in Seattle. And there were some street preachers up there. And they had made a big banner. And these guys were not confrontational at all. I mean, they were not trying to pick a fight. They weren't trying to be rude. They had a banner that listed all these sins. That are you in, are you in bondage to sin? And it listed a bunch of sins. Didn't even have one six said, yeah, they weren't trying to pick on them. And at the bottom it said, Jesus saved from sin. Boy, that sure is confrontational. Isn't it? And all they were doing was trying to talk to people, trying to witness to them, trying to... And, man, I'm telling you what. Man, th these guys jumped them. I'm talking about that on the ground just beating these preachers. And I'm talking about just dog cussing them, just so angry. She goes, this, this one girl got up in his face and said, who are you to judge me? Who are you? Who are you? I mean, she was slobbering. I mean, she was... At her, and he didn't say anything. He would just tell her about how Jesus could save her from sin. Who are you to judge me? Well, man, he didn't say anything to you, but I know who did. Yeah. You know when somebody gets angry about something like that, and nobody's even said anything to them about their pet sin, about what they're, you know what it is? The Holy Ghost. Yeah. Getting on. Come here, Adrian and Pop. Adrian and Pop. I'm going to be the Holy Ghost. Ma is just going to be the sinner. And I told her, I said, I, I said, I told her, all she has to do is disagree with me so that could, you know, come pretty natural. So. Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Do you hear that? None. That means you. None righteous. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God.
got in the car with me and came home. He, he, he got up under the covers in the bed with me that night. And he was still talking to me. And I, I finally said, God, look, if you'll just give me back that church, I'll give my life. Just, but I mean, I was afraid that I was going to die before I got saved. I mean, I was afraid that I was going to end up in hell before I made things right with God. That's what conviction does to a person. I don't know how many of y'all saw my birth call on that Sunday when God was dealing with it. But he got all over the Saturday before. I mean, she was a basket case. And that next Sunday morning, she was bawling in Sunday school, and Brother Ronnie had to sneak her some tissues. And all he was talking about was the children of God, how God adopts us into his family. It's just so happy to be what I had talked about the day before. But Brother Ronnie, Brother Ronnie wasn't jacking her. He wasn't pulling at her. The Holy Ghost sure was. That's why, that's why people get upset. Just like people that, that gave pride for it. That preacher didn't say nothing to that woman to merit that kind of anger and hatred. And don't judge me. But who did? Somebody parked up next to me.
about three people in between them, but that's all right. I'm talking about running every time Brother Gary walk over there, running, hiding behind, peeking out the blinds. Never thought. God will change that. That's just the Holy Ghost of God, friend. That's the witness inside of us. There's a change of passion. We'll go different places. We'll be with different people. And let me say that if, if you've been saved or supposed to that profession, and you're still hanging out with the same folks, going to the same places, doing the same things, something ain't right with that. Right. Look, you don't have to be mean and be holier than thou and get rid of them, but I can promise you, if you get saved and you get that witness in yourself, there's going to be some change in you that's going to make them uncomfortable. They get rid of you. You don't have to worry about that. Just buy them church a few times. Just tell them what God showed you in the Bible a few times. Man, that'll get quiet. They'll get rid of you. Can, Amos 3, 3 says, can two walk together lest they be agreed? What's wrong with that picture? Oh, I'm saved still going to the bars. I'm saved still going to the parties. I'm saved still hanging out with the same crowd doing the same thing. That's wrong, friend. Something's wrong with that. You wouldn't catch me over at an Auburn football party cheering for Auburn with an Auburn t-shirt on. <laughs> you know why? That's not where my passions are at. You know, the only time I've ever worn an Auburn shirt in my life was last year when we had Tacky Day at the church and I wanted to be really tacky. <laughs> That's not where my passions are at. I mean, that does just something bad wrong. About that. That's just confusion. We're going to be doing some different things. We're going to, you know, when somebody drinks wine, they lose their inhibitions. They'll do things they wouldn't normally never do. When somebody gets filled with the Holy Spirit of God, they'll do things they would normally never do. They'll witness to people, they'll perhaps talk to people. Here I am preaching, and I'm just not a, you know, for the most part, I'm, I'm not an outgoing guy. I'm just really not. You know, I, I told you a while back, I had a guy visit here and heard me preach. He hadn't seen me since middle school. And he said, is that brain gone? He said, I thought he was autistic there for a while. You know, he just never talked. <laughs> there was a change in my life. The witness inside of us will give us a change of passions. Have you ever had a change of passion? Are you still doing Are you still chasing that thing? You're always chasing it. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You know, people that drink wine, they get real happy for a little while. And they go right back to their history. You get filled with the Holy Spirit, you get happy, you stay happy. That ain't saying you don't have problems. That ain't saying you don't have bad days. But you still got that joy inside. You got that peace. You got that change of passion. I mean, that's just, you know, Think about how you were in your old life. The things you did, the things you said, the people you hung out with. And yet here you are on a Wednesday night, and it's 
about speaking to himself. He will testify to me. Now, if the Holy Spirit is living inside of us, and the Holy Spirit is going to testify of him, what does that say about the kind of life that we should be living? We should be testifying to him. He'll give us some Christ-like qualities. you got to worry about people that claim to know Christ, and yet nothing about their life mimics Christ. I was just writing some Christ-like qualities down that came to mind. I thought about things like forgiveness. That's a good Christ-like quality. We, we crucified him. We hung him on the cross, and yet he chose to forgive us because forgiveness is a choice. You got some unforgiveness in your heart? Not Christ like. Well, they didn't ask for forgiveness. Well, give me anyway. Thought about loyalty. You don't see many loyal people in this world today. Not loyal to Christ, not loyal to church, not loyal to their spouse, not loyal to their friend. But Christ is a loyal friend. I think about faithfulness. God's looking for folks. With a little wherewithal, a little faithfulness, a little stick to it. I think about honesty. Man, honesty. You can't hardly find that anymore. I mean, even, even in the church house, there's no such thing as a white line. Honesty. I think about purity. Man, man where is that gone? Can you find that in church anymore? Holiness. Living a righteous life, living a pure life. These qualities. Look, these qualities, I mean, when we think about, you know, people like preachers are supposed to have things like this, but the truth is, it should be commonplace for Christians. And we're not talking about excelling or exceeding expectations. We're talking about the status quo. That ought to be, these ought to be commonplace in the life of a Christian because that's what a Christian means is to be Christ-like, to be that little Christ. The Holy Spirit said, uh, the, the Lord said to the Holy Spirit that He would testify to me. He would testify of Him. And our lifestyle should be testifying. Now what about, what about the people outside of church that you see on a regular basis? The, the co-workers and the schoolmates and uh, the people that you rub shoulder with every day. Could they see in your life that you're testifying to Jesus? Are you, are you just the same that they are? Because here's the thing. Verse 10 says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. Just like I did with Pines down there. When she was disagreeing with me, she was making God a liar because the witness had come and was telling her these things. That's what happens when sinners get under conviction. When they say no to God, they're calling a liar. But if they say yes, the witness comes in to dwell. He that believeth not God in any mark, because he believeth not the record that God gave his Son. And this is the record that God has given us in our life. And this life is in his Son. Do you have that life tonight? Do you have that witness within yourself that lets you know for sure that you're saved. Do you have God dwelling inside of you? Has God ever convicted you of your sins? Have you ever had that, I call it a conversation, it really was more a listening session. But I'm telling you, it's real. I'm not talking about religion tonight. Look, there's a lot of folks with a name on a church roll going to die and go to hell. There's a lot of people singing in choirs across America going to die and go to hell. There's a lot of preachers that stand behind the sacred beds going to die and go to hell. There's a lot of, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that, that people think are going to heaven. They're not unless they get saved. The road to hell is paved with religion. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. I'm talking about has he ever forgiven you for your sins? Have you ever asked was there ever a convicted heart? Was there ever a change of passions? And are there some Christ-like qualities in your life? That's how the witness, that's how the Holy Spirit will let us know that we have eternal life. Do you have eternal life tonight? If you don't, 
If you're not sure, I'll be glad to show you from the Word of God how you can know that you're saved. Would you stand? been saying if you're saying tonight I would love to just show you 